Start off your afternoons with Ashton and CeeLo, as they calm your nerves, and shine a light, into your life. This is the Afternoon Show, with Ashton and CeeLo. Thanks for tuning in to the Afternoon Show, recorded live Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern Time on Bring Me to Life Radio. Today, learn about one of the most futuristic philosophers of our time as we honor the life and death of Jack Fresco, a self-described social engineer who coined the term resource-based economy. All that, plus some uplifting prank calls coming up after this song. This is My Friend by Mitch Haney. My Friend by Mitch Haney. Thanks for tuning in here to the afternoon show. Thanks for hanging in there. I'm sure that you guys are really going to enjoy what's coming up here. Now let's get to today's topic. Ashton, are you with us? I am here and alive. (laughs) Excellent. Thanks for being here, Ashton. I I appreciate it. Honored to be on the show, honored to share some space with everyone that's tuning in and 
grateful for this whole thing. Excellent. So before we begin our discussion, I wanted to give people a background, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of background into who Jack Fresco was. He was born March thirteenth, nineteen sixteen, and he passed away just uh, about a week ago on May eighteenth. So he was over a hundred and one years old when he passed away. He was an American futurist and a self-described social engineer. He was self-taught and worked in a variety of positions related to industrial design. Mr. Fresco wrote and lectured his news on his views on sustainable cities, energy efficiency, natural resource management, cybernetic technology, automation, and the role of science in society. He also directed The Venus Project, a documentary film about his ideals and his inventions that could transform our world as we know it. He advocated global implementation of a socio-economic system, which he referred to as a resource-based economy. So that's a little bit about his background and who he was. I think his most well-known um, film, or people would recognize him mostly from the Venus Project. So I wanted to play a clip of that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. If you want to put an end to war and most problems, depression, unemployment, what you eventually must do, you got to bring the whole world together as one nation. And you have to declare all the Earth's resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. If you don't do that, you'll have the same problems over and over again, war, depression, etc. We don't go to other countries to bring democracy. We go to take their oil or whatever we can get. Do you understand that? There never was a democracy in this country. As long as there's poor people that can't feed their kids, as long as you have religion on the air Saturday and Sunday, unless you had all religions and non-religion on the air, that's a democracy. We have all points of view. But if you got broadcasting and our president criticized another country, I would say in a true democracy... Our president might criticize another country. Then we would invite the prime minister of that country to give his point of view. Then we invite the prime minister of Sweden. He said, they're both full of shit. This is how I see it. That's a democracy. But when you've got one point of view, watch out. Whenever you hear democracy and freedom, watch out. It means you're losing it. The nearest thing to democracy is the Internet where you can say what you want so far. There are a lot of people who would like to take the Internet and control it. If they ever do that, you're dead. So that was a clip from the Venus Project of Jack Fresco talking about. And Ashton, I know that you've seen this movie, and I know that you know a whole lot about this um, person. So what do you think about Jack Fresco? That was a great clip. Um, I mean... Jack is definitely one of my all-time heroes. Um, the in-depth, like, uh, really how well thought out he has really planned the Venus Project and the, like, holistic um, nature of his ideas, like, all-encompassing ideas that would serve all of society, like he says, not just a, a select few, you know, like, Mm -hmm. today's world you know we have the one percent that are you know living the best life ever you know like the money system capitalism has enabled people to raise themselves to um you know huge expansive lives but you know it's left a lot of humanity in the dust and i just love that his ideas are including um everyone you know i've never seen another um like you know socioeconomic socioeconomic system that really embraces the lowest rungs of society, you know, mm -hmm. um, when he says, you know, there should be no homeless people and they don't even have a democracy at all, you know, it's like, it's eye-opening and mm -hmm. yeah, it's beautiful, I think, uh, 
we definitely lost a great man and to carry on as I, our, his ideas is definitely like really important. Mm -hmm. For sure. And in the Venus project movie, it, it shows a lot of his inventions that he had and it just, everything that he, he created was so much more efficient than what we have today. But I like the fact that he not only drew up these inventions, but he also talked about society and what we could do to better our society. So it wasn't just, you know, technology. It was technology. It was the economy. It was social justice. So he encompassed a lot of a lot of that. So, like you said, he's he's a big role model for this world, and he, it's a, it's a sad passing. But he he was a hundred and one years old. Yeah. Yeah, he he was up there, and it's just, you know, what he accomplished in his lifetime, not many humans ever have, like, set up a whole system for humanity, you know, that's pretty wild, and, you know, when he, like you said, he's not just little tiny trinkets and inventions and, like, you know, photovoltaic, uh, like, roof seeing and housing and, like, very, like, scientific-minded stuff, he, like, talks about having bridging the differences between countries, having multiple point of views from everyone, seeing the like downfalls of what our, you know, how our minds led to this whole situation and it's pretty beautiful. Um what it's you know, it's not just scientific, it's pretty artistic as well. Mm -hmm. So what do you th what do you think his his death means for for the world and and for what he created with the Venus project and all the technology that he developed? We're at an interesting point, you know, um with Trump as president and a lot of people just waking up to the fact that the governments aren't fully, you know, supporting uh the population and you know we have dictators across the globe and like Drax said in that quote, like most of the wars and stuff going on, it's just a battle over resources. And so his plan is to essentially apply the scientific method to the way we use our resources to create this like dynamic equilibrium, he calls it, where you're not say like a tree takes 30 years to grow and a hemp plant takes three months to grow and the efficiency of having to grow a field of trees to get the same amount of, you know, like fiber and hemp pulp and uh, all, you know, the tree pulp or whatever, um, that efficiency is, you know, completely skewed in today's world with the um, profit-based system where value is based on scarcity. And so, you know, things like oil, trees, things that are really scarce are the most profitable. And so that's like what runs the game and, you know, people can hate on all the oil companies as much as they want, but our overall system pretty much calls for it. So mm -hmm. Definitely. So w to you, we talked a little bit about resource-based economy, but we haven't really gotten into it. What is, in your mind, what is a resource-based economy? A resource-based economy is essentially removing the middleman, which is money, between us and resources, where the, first, the main idea is declaring that all the resources on, resources on Earth are the common heritage of everyone, um, which is pretty much like a communist, socialist idea of like public land. All the land, all the resources are... Um, available to everyone and capitalism is essentially like private land ownership um which you know totally makes sense in a world that's like we're like just reach realizing that we're like just reaching that global society point where with the internet um we're all connected and we can like see all the way around the globe and we all see that not like everyone's the same and the resource-based economy really it kind of, like I said, brings that scientific method and efficiency to how we use resources. And he suggests using computers to, like, survey the whole planet to see what we have, see what we don't have, and um, pretty much find, just be the most efficient in managing our resources possible. 
and you know like like most fruits and stuff have seeds in them of 20 you know apple has like 10 20 seeds in it and if you like do the math if every apple has that and we maximize the efficiency of the food industry then you know it's a little bit of math you could see that there doesn't need to be anyone going hungry at all because we have just Earth is blessed with the most amazing resources in the world where Jack Espresso says, like, you know, maybe you couldn't do a resource-based economy on Mars because there's no good resources. But Mm -hmm. on Earth, we're blessed with amazing, like, miraculous resources that multiply, like, in compounding ways. So if you had, you know, like, every human had their own food food forest, you wouldn't really need to fight over food. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So... I think we have maybe one more question and then we'll get to the uh, song spotlight segment here on the afternoon show. So we're talking about autom- he talk he talks a lot about automation and how a lot of us humans we do really boring um mindless uh things because for some reason I guess we feel like we need to have a job in order to be happy or People are scared that if this ad automation comes in, they're going to start losing their jobs. So, what would they you, <laughs> what would you, how would you comfort people who won't be able to, who won't be able to do those robot jobs anymore? What are they going to be doing instead? The main trade-off, then you know, would have to have that transition team and have you know a lot of people involved, making sure people's you know incomes at first were like stabilized. Um, the main thing is the way I think of it is when you buy something at a store, for example, like a table, you'll get the table, you bring it home and then you might have that table for like a hundred years. You could pass it down to your kids. Your kids could pass it down to their, their kids, but you don't have to like rebuy that table again. So when we think of like, a nationwide like free energy or something or free transportation and all those people lose their jobs. We'd have, you'd have to pay for way less in the resource based economy because your housing, your food, your transportation is already taken care of. And that's what most people are paying for and working paycheck to paycheck just to live. And most people are like, Oh, I'm going to go treat myself and like deep. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, if you can wrap your mind around that, we'll own, um, you know, like that bigger table that'll last us, you know, it's like our resource that we're using today, it's kind of based in planned obsolescence where things are built to fall apart. Everything has to be renewed um, and like paid for and boxed for again so the companies can stay in profit. Because it's like if the computer lasts for a hundred years, then the company is going to crash in ten years. Because they, everyone has one; they don't need one now. Mm-hmm. So it kind of also like um, completely removes the excess of resources um, from the world. Um, and the main thing with the job transition would have to be like a lot of communication and um, people realizing that all of a sudden they wouldn't have to pay for a lot of the things that they're paying for. Right. And also, a lot of people complain that they don't have time to do the things that they love, but once, you know, if if we did switch to a resource-based economy, a, a lot more people would be able to focus on their crafts or their hobbies, like painting or, or music or whatever. So I think it would, it would be a, we would be a much more happy planet if we were able to make that totally. switch. Sweet. Well, yeah, I totally agree. Definitely, definitely. So, thank you, Jack Fresco, for all that you did, and we hope that um, your ideals and your philosophies, your inventions, continue to progress and shift the consciousness and the paradigm of this planet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. So, awesome. um, coming up next, we have now the song spotlight. So, I'll let you go ahead and take over, Ashton. We are honored to play a Stratosphere song called Follow Your Heart today. 
Um, this is the title track of his album, Follow Your Heart. And the reason I want to play this one, because it's such a beautiful, heart opening track, but it's also just that message of, you know, follow your heart. You don't have to hear so much of what everyone else is doing, kind of like Jacques Fresco. Like, he followed his heart, and for the last 40 or 60 years, everyone's, like, you know, not really agreed with him. But here, me and Kilo are as, like, you know, some 20-year-olds um, who weren't born until, like, he was 80 years old or whatever, now fully getting his ideas. So follow your heart, um, even if other people aren't telling you to.
That was Follow Your Heart by Stratosphere. Hope you guys enjoyed that song. And like Ashton said, you know, follow your heart and and check out the Venus Project. Did you have something else you wanted to say before we get into the print calls, Ashton? Yeah, I really want to tell people to make sure to check out the Venus Project. Um, go to the website, check out the documentaries. There's Future by Design, Paradise or Oblivion, um, the Zeitgeist film, and... You know, try to find ways maybe we can get things started on a local level. Feel free to reach out to us and maybe even some of the smaller ideas that Jock has, we can start applying. Um, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to be traveling down to uh, hang out with CeeLo in person. We're going to be uh, at Mad Tea Party Jam, mm-hmm. uh, which is June 16th weekend, the next festival coming up for us. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we're going to be doing workshops. We're going to have a Star Trek panel discussion. I'm going to be playing music. Papa is going to be playing three hour and a half long sets. Um, it's going to be so amazing. Definitely, it's going to be one of the one of the best festivals of the year by far. And not yeah. saying that because I'm going to be part of it, but just because that's that's the truth of it. There's a lot of great people, great music, great. Uh, great nature around us, just a great overall um, festival. So definitely anybody interested in that, check it out. Called the Mad Tea Party Jam. Sweet. So I think if you're if you're ready, Ashton, I'm ready to do some uplifting prank calls. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get this started. This is the segment uplifting prank calls. Uplifting prank calls. Hello. Hi there. This may be random, but I just wanted to call and say that every day may not be good, but there is good in something good in every day. I agree. Excellent. Well, I just wanted to call and say something uplifting and hope that you have a wonderful day. Great. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. (laughs) Uplifting prank call finished. Hello? Hello, I just wanted to call you and let you know that if you love yourself first, everything else will fall into line. And that's all you really have to do. You just keep on loving yourself and you can do anything. I mean, a man can't be comfortable without his own approvable approval. So I just wanted to call and tell you that, that I love you and you can do anything. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. He hung up. That was hilarious. Uplifting Frank calls. So there you have it. That was the uplifting <laughs> prank call segment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I I think the callers enjoyed it. It's so funny. Their like response is always like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not trying to sell me something? <laughs> You're just trying to give me love? What's going on here? They're probably like, man, like looking up the number on Google, like, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Me too. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in here to the afternoon show. It's It's been great to have you guys and just really honored to, to be here doing this. If you want us to send in an uplifting prank call to one of your friends, private message us their number. You can do that on Facebook at Project Bring Me to Life or Project Bring Me to Life at gmail.com. Or if you know us personally on Facebook, then you can send us a number and let us know that you would like to... I don't know, that you'd like us to prank call them. So, <laughs> Any <laughs> final words, Ashton, before we hit the road? Uh, I just want to tell everyone out there that to stick with it, keep following your dreams, um, love everyone around you, spread kindness, and just 
keep doing the best you can and the best you're doing is good enough and you're good enough and I'm honored to be on here with CeeLo and on the morning show or the afternoon show <laughs> and um, yeah, just uh, really thankful. Hope everyone has a great day. Excellent. Well, we're going to end the show with one of Ashen's songs called Dragon Temple on Sirius B. Is there anything you want to say about the song before we end the show with it? Um, uh, this song will be on my upcoming EP when it um, drops sometime this summer. Um, it's going to be, I think, actually the first track. And um, I'm really excited about it. It's like multi-genre, kind of hybrid style for me, some new styles for me. So hope you enjoy it. Says we are part of an artificial of evolution. We are here to do something. If you are true to their purpose, we will move humanity towards the world you saw. on Earth are spreading the seeds of evolutionary cosmic possibilities, of which not even us know the exact outcome. The process requires a consciousness with a heart and brain that is far beyond even ours. Yeah.